Hello! In this video we're gonna create textures for our loot drop in Substance Design. So as you can see on my screen I've got this loot drop effect and what we're gonna do we're gonna create this odd shape circle very soft and blurry texture. Next it's gonna be a simple star that we can use for any blinking or any small dot objects. We're gonna have an indicator as well which is this line and also those two on the sides and we're gonna have a trail which we're gonna use for our swirls that goes around the object and also the ones that are on the ground. So I'm gonna fit all those four textures into the one video. They are quite simple however some people might struggle to create them from scratch. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this video. So now we are in Substance, I'm just going to press Tab and I'm going to start with the simplest texture. So I'm going to go for Starburst. In here I'm just going to try to create this very blurry shape that we had in the engine. I'll play with some of the settings, maybe increase the branches as well. I'll keep them maybe 20, let's start with 20. Play with some random values. Size variation as well. I want it I want this to be very blurry. I think I'm just gonna go with this. The max size. Okay, so I've got some lines here as you can see, let me zoom in. Right, the shape overall is very very blurry, so I'm just going to keep this one as this blurry texture I'm going to need for any uh, glow that I want around the objects. I'm going to export it as a RGB. And obviously I'm just going to put them into three slots, however whenever you're exporting those textures you can put uh, one into each channel and you can end up with having one or two textures in the engine for the optimization purposes. Okay, so that's the first one. For the second texture, I'm gonna go for Starburst again. I'm gonna change branches amount to four. I'm gonna increase the max size to maximize the UV space. I'm gonna keep it as is. I'm gonna copy and paste this. And for the one at the top, I'm just gonna increase the blur and the min size as well. That way I created like a nice glow or halo around that uh, main shape, okay? The thing is I'm just gonna decrease the max size because I don't wanna go outside of the boundaries. I'm gonna blend those together. I want this blurry shape to go to the top. I'll change here to add and for the opacity I just want a slight glow around that shape, so I'm going to go maybe for 50%, which is 0.5 here on the opacity slider. I'm going to go for bevel next. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this bevel. I want to see if it's going to look good, because this is like an erosion map for that texture. So I'm going to go for minus 0.05. And maybe more, maybe seven or less. Yeah, I'm gonna go for maybe four, so minus 0 0.04. And now I'm just gonna blend those together using RGB merge node. So the erosion actually gonna go, I want this to go to the blue channel, this one's gonna go to the green and red. What you could do, you could merge those two textures together by getting the RGBA split. So for example, you can just drag R channel here and that way you can merge two textures into the one file. 
I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go with this so I can have a two separate textures. However, if that'll be a game project, I'll probably try to optimize this as much as I can and merge those two together. Next is gonna be the indicator. So I'm gonna start with shape. I wanna create this vertical line. Cut a little bit at the top and bottom as well. I'm gonna blur it slightly. Careful not to go outside of the boundary. I lose some data, so I'm just gonna maybe shrink it a little bit more and increase the blur. Next, I'm gonna use histogram scan. I want my edges to be slightly rounded on both ends. And now if I can go to my shape here, and I'm gonna decrease the size of it. You can see I'm maintaining those rounded edges. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. Next, let's use trapsoid. Trapsoid transform grayscale. What I want to do, I want to create this hinge at the top and I'm going to turn off the tiling mode here. So no tiling. Next, I'm going to use another blur because I want this texture to be actually the halo. Then more. I think I'm going to go maybe for Let's go maybe for 20. Like we're actually going outside of the boundary here at the bottom. I'm gonna go to the main shape here and decrease its max size. Okay, I'm gonna get the setup, copy and paste it here. I'm gonna blend those two together. I want this one to go up to the top because I can control the halo and the glow around it basically. Here I'm just gonna set it to add. However, I want to modify this shape. So I'm gonna go to blur at very low value, something like 0.2. I'm gonna go to shape as well and shrink it horizontally. We can again we're gonna get this. Very nice thin indicator. For the histogram scan, I'm going to shrink this one as well. But for our main shape, let's try to increase the size of it. Here. In the blur, let's maybe try to increase the intensity and set it maybe to two. And in our final blend node, we can just modify how much of this glow or halo we want around that indicator shape. I want uh, this to be even thinner a bit, so I'm just going to shrink this using the histogram scan. So I'm going to go for 0.7. Next is going to be RGB merge and I'm going to merge those together into the texture. I think the halo might be a little bit too much, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna decrease the opacity of it maybe to 0.4. Still feel that it's actually a little bit too much. You can go to shape, try to scale it down vertically. I'm gonna go with something like this. Obviously, once you put in the engine and start making material, if it feels that it's a little bit too much, you can come back here and just tweak those settings. And the last one is going to be a trail for our swirls that we're going to have. So I'm going to start with Perlin Noise Cross Section. I think this is my favorite method of extracting the trail out of various shapes. I'm going to go for Gradient Mirrored Drawing Style. In here, I'm just going to use histogram scan to extract that shape. I go back to parallel noise now and 
try to get much lower scale. So for four, I think five might be a little bit too much. So let's go with four. So we've got the shape now. I'm going to go for bevel. I'm going to head into the minus values. Get some nice shapes from this trail. I use warp next. I want to use the multi-directional uh, warp grayscale and in here I'm going to bring another pedaling noise. I'm going to modify the scale of it as well and in here I'm going to try to get maybe try different settings. I'm going to try chain only on two directions Average, max. I think I'm gonna go with chain. I think it gives some really nice results. I'm gonna blur it. Just to create this nice soft outline and the glow. I'm gonna go maybe for let's try 40, and we can always come down later on. I blend those two together. I want my glow to go to the top, so I can control it with opacity. In here, let's try to get a different value than add, because as you can see, if, we, if I'm going to set it to add, it's going to just overblow the center of it. So I'm going to try maybe max in. I think max is going to work exactly what I want. I'm going to now decrease the opacity of, the, of, that, of that glow. I just think I want a little bit, not too much of it. Next, I'm going to use another blur just to get rid of any hard edges that might be there. So I'm going to set it to one. I'm going to use next, maybe let's try another warp. This time I'm just going to drag this texture. I'm going to blur it and decrease the amount of those lines. Let's try this. As you can see, it's going to create those tiny details of lines with the default setting of one. I'm not sure if it's going to be visible, but it's just an additional detail that, you know, people might notice. Next, I'm going to try and maybe blur, but directional, just to add a bit more motion to it by blurring this. And now let's combine those together. Max settings. So we're going to maintain the hard lines of that one, but we're going to implement the blur of this node. And now we have, actually I'm going to switch those around. I'm going to control that glow. You can see it's kind of adding slight halo around our shapes, because without, without it we've got this kind of dark outline. So maybe I'm going to set it to 0.7. Okay, now I want to get rid of the sides because I will be scrolling that texture over the mesh and I don't want sides to be there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use blend node. I'm going to go for gradient. Let's try this one. I'm going to rotate it 90 degree. Use histogram scan get a bit more contrast, something like this, because I want to, I only want to cut the edges. I get here and set it to multiply. As you can see, we managed to get rid of the edges there. I think it might be a little bit hard transition here between those two points. So maybe let's run it through blur. Plug it in, as you can see, we managed to get rid of those hard lines that we've been getting. Right, I think we are actually going outside of the borders here, so I'm going to tweak it by scaling down the position of that histogram scan and tweaking the contrast as well. Because I want to maximize the space, however, I don't want to go outside of the borders. So if you're getting some weird results or it's not tiling properly in the engine, that might be the cause of it. So come back to 
substance and try to increase your black range in the textures See here on those sides okay so that's it that's the four textures we have done in this video Gonna add another rgb merge here and we have a separate texture the way to optimize it would be to probably combine those two into the one texture and those two as well for each of those you can create this a bevel node if you want to have uh, some nice erosion so you can go into the minus values of that trail for example and you can try to erode it that way i think there is a lot of soft shapes here and a nice contrast between those so i think i'll be okay by using just the power if i need to erode that however i'm just will be scrolling that over the mesh so i don't need any erosion actually because it's going to go from point a to b Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to optimize, just merge those textures together and that should work for you. All right, thank you so much.